Hello children and welcome to another episode of Storytime with Winnie and Nan. And today is a special episode because we're going to be coming to you from the White Lamb Bookstore in Reading Center. And the theme for today's show is winter. And the craft for today, so you can gather your materials, is to create a winter scene like this. And this is mine. And all you'll need to create this is a piece of blue construction paper, a small piece of white construction paper, and some white tissue. And this is the one that I made, and it looks like it's snowing. And you can draw on your snow. I put stickers on mine. And I'll remember, you can search for Storytime with Winnie and Nan on the RCTV website, and it will tell you what time you can view this show. You can also search for Storytime with Winnie and Nan on YouTube. So I hope you enjoy the show, and off we go. The first thing I want to do is thank you guys for coming this morning. I'm Nan, and I have a TV show on RCTV that you can watch. If you go on to the Reading Channel, tell, tell mom or dad or grandma or grandpa to put on the Reading Channel and you can look for story time with Winnie and Nan. And you'll be able to watch this show because that nice man over there is filming us and it's going to be on TV. So you're going to be movie stars. How about that? Wow. Is that good? And usually when I do my shows, this is my co-star, and his name is Winnie, and he's my dog. So my show is story time with Winnie and Nan. But Winnie couldn't come today. He couldn't come today. So he's here with us in his pillow. Okay, so can everybody say hi to Winnie? See if he can say hi, Winnie, and I hope he can hear us. Do you think he can hear us? I think so. And the stories that I brought, and I'm Nan, and the stories that I brought today are all about winter. Winter is the season that we're in right now, isn't it? And it's cold outside. You guys all wore your nice boots and your, your jackets, and you're all nice and warm because it's cold and it's winter time. I actually wear two jackets. Two ja Sometimes I wear two jackets, too, because it's really cold. And how, how many of you have ever said to a grown-up, do you think it's going to snow tonight? I said it two nights ago. And did it snow? Mm-hmm. Mm we got snow yesterday or the day before, right? That's a question that we ask a lot. And this, the first story that I'm going to read to you, is a story about three animals. This is a fox. This is a hare, which is sort of like a rabbit. It's a little different than a rabbit because it's a special kind of rabbit that in the wintertime turns white. And this is a human. It's a child. And they all keep asking their moms if it's going to snow. Why do you think they ask that question? Do you think they like to play in the snow? Yeah. I bet they do. All right, so off we go. And this has beautiful pictures. Mama, will it snow? That's the fox asking the question. Mama, will it snow tonight? Mama, will it snow? This is the hare. No, no, no snow tonight. Not yet. Mama, will it snow? Mama, will it snow? Mama, will it snow tonight? I'm swinging on the swing. See, they have on their snow suits and their boots. They're all ready. The wind is burr. The bushes are bare. The berries are all picked. It's all ready for winter. Mama, will it snow? Mama, will it snow? Mama, will it snow tonight? They're getting anxious, aren't they? They're losing patience. Our fur is thick. Our brown turns white. See, there's the hair. In the wintertime, they turn white so they can hide in the snow. Our jam is made from all those berries they picked. Mama, will it snow? Mama, will it snow? Mama, will it snow tonight? What do you think is going to happen at the end of the book? Soon, soon, very soon. 
It smells like snow. It sounds like snow. And it feels like snow. How does it feel like snow? It feels cold and shivery. That night, they all looked up at the hazy, lazy, fuzzy moon. And all the mothers said, in their own mother way, it will snow tonight. And sure enough, look out the window. What's happening? See the animals playing? Yeah. What did it do? What did it do? It snowed. And all those mothers were right. Yeah, just like the other morning when we woke up and it was snowing. Yeah. All right. Well, that was a good one. The next one, how many, pe how many of you know the song, If You're Happy and You Know It, Clap Your Hands? Yeah, we all know that one. This book is kind of like that, but instead of clapping hands, the animals all clap there. What do animals have? They don't have hands. They have paws. paws. They clap their paws. All right. And this is all about friends who are playing and having a really fun time in the snow. Look at the pictures and look at all the fun things they're doing in the snow. And it rhymes. So listen for the rhymes. If it's snowy and you know it, clap your paws. You can tumble on the tundra just because. If it's snowy and you know it, roll a snowball up and throw it. If it's snowy and you know it, clap your paws. If Winnie was here, he would clap his paws. If your fur is full of flurries, taste a flake. Have you ever done that? Stuck your tongue out and caught snowflakes on your tongue? That's fun to do. Skate around and make some angels on a lake. If your fur is full of flurries, you'll forget your winter worries. If your fur is full of flurries, taste a flake. If the skies are crisp and clearing, grab your skis. Does anybody ski? Not yet? Do you ski? I that's good. Give your tiny friends a ride behind your knees. He's, to get, he's hitching a ride. If the skies are crisp and clearing, let a walrus do the steering. If the skies are crisp and clearing, grab your skis. If it's shimmery and sunny, sculpt a friend. To sculpt means to mold or to create something. If he topples, it's an easy job to mend. If it's shimmery and sunny, borrow glasses from a bunny. If it's shimmery and sunny, sculpt a friend. If it's frosty and you're freezing, build a fort, leaving room for all your buddies, tall or short. If it's frosty and you're freezing, add some curtains that are pleasing. If it's frosty and you're freezing, build a fort. If it's drafty and you're drifting, give a roar. Get some help from white belugas off the shore. A beluga is a whale. If it's drafty and you're drifting, half a whale for heavy lifting. If it's drafty and you're drifting, give a roar. If at last you're finally landing, blow a kiss. Make a promise that you'll write to friends you'll miss. If at last you're finally landing, leave the float you've been commanding. If at last you're finally landing, blow a kiss. Can you blow a kiss goodbye? When you leave someplace, you blow kisses? If it's starry and you're starving, share a meal. There's enough for all from caribou to seal. If it's starry and you're starving, add a sparkly iceberg carving. If it's starry and you're starving, share a meal. If it's arctic and you're aching, soak your toes. If your feet are cold, you can soak your toes. Hold a steamy cup of cocoa to your nose. If it's arctic and you're aching, give your paws a gentle baking. If it's arctic and you're aching, soak your toes. I like to do that when my feet are cold. If it's wintry and you're weary, go inside. Paint a picture of the icy sports you tried. If it's wintry and you're weary, read a book that's warm and cheery. If it's wintry and you're weary, go inside. 
If it's sleeting, the other day we had sleet, huh? When it wasn't snowy, it was raining, that freezing rain. If it's sleeting and you're sleepy, climb in bed. Tuck your tails and paws and fins beneath the spread. If it's sleeting and you're sleepy, snuggle up with something sheepy. There's a world of wild adventures in your head. What are they all doing? They're sleeping, they're dreaming of all the fun they had. See the way they're all dreaming? They're all in bed. And they're all dreaming about all the fun they had. Well, all right, I hope you liked that one. The next one I'm gonna read is a special book because does anybody know, just maybe, does anybody know what Friday is? I bet some of the grown-ups know what Friday is. Do you know? Friday's Nana Day. It's Nana Day. Well, that's a good day. That sounds wonderful. But it's also, did I hear somebody say something? What is it? What's Friday? What is it? It's Groundhog Day. Good for you. Give me a high five. Good for you. What does that mean? Do you know what that means? Um, it means you get to play around. That's right. <laughs> if the groundhog comes out of his hole, groundhogs are animals that sleep all winter. They're very lazy. They sleep all winter long. And they come out of their hole on Groundhog Day. There's one special groundhog. And he comes out. And if he sees his shadow, if it's a nice day like today and he sees his shadow, that means that we're going to have six more weeks of winter. So it's going to snow some more. If he doesn't see his shadow, that means it's almost spring. So what do we want him to do? Raise your hand if you want him to see his shadow and there be winter. You like winter? Raise your hand if you don't want him to see his shadow and it be spring. I'm going to open, raise both hands for that because I like spring. All right. I, well, like I do too. Well, this is a really fun story about this little groundhog. And she doesn't know the secret of Groundhog Day, but she's going to find out from her uncle. So this is called The Secret of the First One Up. So this is, this, I love this book. This is a really cute story. And her name is Lila, and she's a very special groundhog. Lila twirled around and around in the candlelit den. On the wall, her shadow spun like a whirling top. Time for all groundhogs to be in bed, her papa called. But I'm not tired, Lila cried. I can't possibly sleep all the way to spring. Now, Lila, Mama said, everyone else is in bed, and Uncle Wilbur is about to head for his den. Lila made a face at her drowsy brother and snoring sister and began to waltz with the shadow. She knew that above the ground, chilly winds shivered through the forest and fat gray squirrels scurried to check their hidden acorns. Down below, her family was happy to climb into bed and pull fluffy covers under furry chins. Every one of them was ready for a long winter sleep, but not Lila. I hate to go to bed, she said. It's such a long time until spring. That's how I used to feel when I was young said Uncle Wilbur, but now I enjoy all the resting I can get. You always get up early to go above the ground, Lila said. I do. I do too. What do you do up there? Aren't you scared to go up all alone? Is it cold? Is it snowy? Is anyone else there? What do you do up there? If I answered all your questions, I'd never get to sleep, said Uncle Wilbur. Even worse, I'd give away the secret. What secret, said Lila. Look at Uncle Wilbur, isn't he cute? The secret of the first one up, said her uncle. But I want to know, said Lila. I love secrets. Then make sure you're up earlier than anyone else, said her uncle. That's the only way to know. That's how it's always been, and that's the fun of it. He scooped Lila up and tucked her into bed and kissed her good night. See you in the spring, he said, tiptoeing out the door. But how will I know when to wake up? Lila called after him, but Uncle Wilbur's voice echoed down the tunnel. Just try to beat me. Lila listened to Papa rumbling snore and Mama's deep breathing. I'm going to do it. I'm going to be the first one up. Are you ever the first one up at home? Me. You are? Yeah. You know who's the first one up in, you know who's the first one up in my house? 
Winston. Mm. He's always the first one up. Yeah. I'm going to do it. I'm going to be the first one up, she said, yawning. But the only way to be sure was not to go to sleep at all, to just stay up. She rubbed her eyes and yawned. I will think of exciting things like digging new tunnels and running through the forest and mysterious secrets. And then Lila was spinning down, down, down into a deep winter sleep. Did she stay awake? No, she fell asleep. Above the ground, the days passed. Storms roared, branches snapped, snow fell and melted and fell again. Cardinals flashed red through the white landscape and perched on ice-covered branches. Deer wandered through the trees, searching for food. So all this is going on while she's sleeping. Then, Lila's eyes flew open. She leaped out of bed. Who's there? What happened? She cried. Nothing moved. No one else was awake. But she knew from the smell of the air and the feel of the earth that a long time had passed since her uncle had tucked her into bed. Uncle Wilbur, he had challenged her to be the first one up, but maybe he was already up. Above the ground, she would never learn the secret. Lila pulled on her clothes and ran along the dark, silent tunnel. Uncle Wilbur, I woke up all by myself, she called, poking her head into his den. He padded, she padded the sleeping bulge of blankets. I beat you. What do you think of that? Her uncle just snored. Let's get above ground, she cried. She shook her, his shoulder. Come on, let's go. She's trying to wake him up. Not yet, he murmured. A few minutes more. But Lila couldn't wait. Not even one more minute. She had to be out under the open sky to breathe the wind blowing through the forest clearing and to hear the birds calling. She had to know the secret. Lila hurried up the tunnel toward the light, bursting out into the open air. She found herself surrounded by those who stay awake all winter. The squirrels, the deer, beavers, foxes, rabbits, raccoons, the cardinals, the chickadees, the badgers, and the porcupines. Those are all the animals that we still see in the wintertime. They don't go anywhere. They don't sleep all winter. They stay awake. Tell us, tell us, they all cried. Look at, they're all looking at her. Did you see it? Lila blinked in the bright light. See what, she asked. Your shadow, cried the animals. Do you see your shadow? Was the secret about a shadow? The animals were standing watching her, but no one moved. The clearing became so still that Lila's ears roared from the silence. She took a deep breath. The air felt cool and smelled like all the new pines. Lila looked down at the ground, searching for her gray shadow that had danced with her in the candlelight. She looked to her left. She looked to her right. She looked all around. Suddenly, she felt lonely, the only groundhog awake without even her little shadow for company. So did she see her shadow? No. I'm sorry, she said. I don't see it. Don't be sorry, said the animals, and they cried and they danced. Spring is coming, spring is coming. Spring is coming, Lila asked. How do you know that? She doesn't know the secret yet. An old badger stopped his dancing and peered at her curiously. My uncle Wilbur said if I was the first one up, I would learn a secret, Lila said. Ah, yes, the secret, said the old badger. It's very simple. Every year, and this is the story that you told us, right? Every year, the first groundhog up on this day has a special job of looking for his or her shadow. If it's there, then there will be six more weeks of winter. This is what we just said. And the groundhog hurries back to bed. I would hate that, said Lila. If, like today, the shadow isn't there, the old badger continued, it means spring is coming and we all rejoice. But you need the sun to have a shadow, said Lila. So a beautiful sunny day means winter is staying and a cloudy gray day means spring is coming? That seems backwards to me. Doesn't that seem funny? Just then, Lila heard a familiar voice behind her. Backwards it may be, but that's the way of shadows in spring, said her uncle, climbing out of the tunnel. I did it, Uncle Wilbur, I did it, she cried. I was the first one up and I learned the secret. 
And is it true about spring? Is it really coming? Would all the neighbors wait for the first groundhog each year if we didn't do a good job predicting spring? If spring is coming, can we go down below and wake everyone up, Lila asked. Can we make acorn pancakes and have a picnic? My stomach is grumbling, said her uncle. Lila slipped her little paw into her uncle's paw. We won't tell anyone the secret, will we, she said. Of course not, said Uncle Wilbur, smiling down at her. Lila smiled back because that's how it's always been, and that's the fun of it. So what do we have to think about Friday? You have to listen to the weatherman and see what he tells you. If it's a sunny day and the groundhog sees a shadow, then we can play in the snow some more. But if he doesn't see a shadow, that means spring is coming. So you have to listen on Friday and you remember this story that told you all about it. All right. Yeah, when you go home, you can ask. Ask someone at home if they know the secret of Groundhog Day. Do we have one more story in us? What do we think? You got room for one more? You want to hear one more? Okay, this is a fun one. But this story, you have to help me with. You have to help me with this one. So you have to listen and you have to help me read this one. I'm going to need you to help me. Can anybody, who wants to help me? Okay, I'm going to need help. Okay, get ready. This is a story, this is a story about friends. We all, you all have friends, I know because you know each other. You all have friends and they all help build a snowman. Have you ever helped a friend build a snowman? Yeah. I bet you have. I bet you've helped someone build a snowman. All right, so this is the book that you have to help me. And it's about this snowman took 10 days. Imagine taking 10 days to build a snowman. Do you think they did a good job? I bet they did. All right, so here we are. We're back in, in December, which is the month, two months before almost. All right, so remember, you have to help me. And it's about best friends. On the first day of winter, my best friend gave to me a red cap with a gold snap. Everybody say that. A red cap with a gold snap. Okay, that's the first day. What number comes after one? Two. Two. All right. On the second day of winter, my best friend gave to me two blue mittens and everybody, a red cap with a gold snap. Okay, we got to remember now. So now we have a red cap and blue mittens. Are we ready? What number comes after two? Three. Three. On the third day of winter, my best friend gave to me three striped scarves and everybody, two blue mittens and a red cap with a gold snap. This is getting hard now. Is everybody up for this? All right, what comes after three? Four. Four. On the fourth day of winter, my best friend gave to me four prickly pine cones. And that's his hair. Look at his prickly pine cones. Okay, then what comes after that? Three striped scarves, help me, two blue mittens, and a red cap with a gold snap. You guys are great. What comes after four? Five. Five. Here we go. You guys are smart. On the fifth day of winter, my best friend gave to me five bird seed pockets and then four prickly pine cones, three striped scarves, two blue mittens, and a red cap with a gold snap. Oh, what comes after five? Six. Six. All right, here we go. Look at him. He's getting really fancy now. On the sixth day of winter, my best friend gave to me Six tiny twigs, and those are his eyelashes. Those are his little eyelashes. Six tiny twigs. What's next? Five, everybody help me. Five bird seed pockets, four prickly pine cones, three striped scarves, two blue mittens, 
and a red cap with a gold snap. Very good. What comes after six? Seven. 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 Oh, this is getting hard. Do you think we can remember all this? There's a lot to remember. All right. On the seventh day of winter, my best friend gave to me seven maple leaves. That's his belt. He has on a maple leaf belt. Help me now. Six tiny twigs, five bird seed pockets, four prickly pine cones, three striped scarves, two blue mittens, and a red cap with a gold snap. Whew. What comes after seven? Eight. 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 Thank you. Good for you. All right. Here we go. Oh. I don't know if I can remember all this. Do you think we can? Okay, help me. On the eighth day of winter, my best friend gave to me this happy face, eight orange berries. And here we go. Seven maple leaves, six tiny twigs, five bird seed pockets, four prickly pine cones, three striped scarves, two blue mittens, and a red cap with a gold snap. Oh, what comes after eight? Nine. Nine. Look at the look at the snowman. He's getting fancy, isn't he? All right, here we go. What do you, what's missing? Here we get the buttons. On the ninth day of winter, my best friend gave to me nine big black buttons. Here we go. Nine orange berries seven maple leaves, six tiny twigs, five bird seed pockets, four prickly pine cones, three striped scarves, two blue mittens, and a red cap with a gold snap. Oh, what comes after nine? Ten. Ten, the last day. Let's see how the snowman looks when he's all finished. What's missing? Is there anything missing on the snowman that you can think of? What is he missing? What else can they add? What do you think? A pipe, maybe. I don't know. Anybody have any other guess? What's missing? Is there anything missing? A pipe. You think a pipe, too? His his little toes. He's got little toes. Ten. Do you have? Everybody has ten toes, right? Ten little piggy toes. On the tenth day of winter, my best friend gave to me ten salty peanuts for toes. Now help me. Nine big black buttons, eight orange berries, six tiny twigs, five bird seed pockets four prickly pine cones, three striped scarves, two blue mittens, and everybody, and a red cap with a gold snap. <laughs> Very good. Let's look at our snowman all finished. There he is. How's he look? I like his little toes. Isn't he cute? He looks like he's going to dance, doesn't he? And look at the little animals are all perched on him. Why do you think these animals, what do you think they're after? They're eating the bird seed, I bet. They're eating the bird seed, I bet, huh? Oh, that's great. What time is it? What we do? Oh, okay. It's 1130. Oh, that was so much fun. I want to thank you all. And we can thank Liz for having us all here today. Can we all say thank you, Liz? Thank you. There she is. Mia. Yeah. Well, thank you all for coming. And if we do this again, if Nian does this again, I would love it if you all came back to see me again. So thank you for coming. Stay warm. Bye.